If you had a secret so deadly, it could destroy you. You'd use deadly force to hide it from your enemies. But when your worst enemy turns out to be a deadly agent named Banner, you're in way over your head. You've got to go someplace you're not supposed to be to take out a radar installation that's not supposed to exist. I want that food! Okay, Just hang in there, pal. God, this was never in the manual. <laughs> Just keep it up, Python. And you're a dead man. <laughs> God, I love this job. <laughs> playing for keeps. Count your blessings, bitch. If this wasn't a movie, I'd be a seven-foot black dude with a heart on. First, there was Groove Tooth. Then came Kentucky Fried Movie. Now comes Outtakes. She's an outtake. She's gonna be an outtake. Outtake, outtake, outtake. Gosh, Frankie, I can see why you score so much. The most outrageous, offensive comedy ever put to film. Jesus, Linda, why do you always pop your zits while I'm driving? Starring F Troops, Forrest Tucker. Watch that thing, will you? Forrest Tucker? I thought he was dead. Outtakes rips apart movies. Jack M. Sells Black Christmas. To Janie from Santa. Oh, Who will be Santa's next victim? <laughs> I made it clear during the campaign. 
first. There was, I spit on your grave. Now comes, I fart on your grave. Commercial. Don't blow your wad on lukewarm porn. Come up to the magazine that'll make you cream in your jeans. Pubes. When you go out on the town during that time of the month, you should always be prepared. Pandora's tampons. Never leave home without them. Ugh. Disgusting. At New York Savings and Loan, we never say no. Fuck off. Talk shows. What we're talking about is the chance to express their repressed libidinal urges. I'm a teenage homosexual, but I admit that freely. When did you be become a homosexual, a dick smoker. When did you start laying mouthpipe? <laughs> Newscast. Excuse me, miss. Can you tell me how you feel about fellatio? Who's that? Oh, I think it's wonderful. It's a great dessert. How do you feel about fellatio? Oh. Hmm. Well, uh, his camera work is very good. Saturday Night Live could only go so far. That's where Outtakes comes in. Must be ratings week again. It's the kind of comedy you'll never see in the theaters or on television. Outtakes. She's an outtake. She's gonna be an outtake. I've got my orders. I just gave you yours. Nelson stars in The Psychotronic Man, and Cell Pictures has got him. The Psychotronic Man, rated R.
disgusting. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We're broadcasting live from Hollywood. There's electricity in the air tonight as this excited crowd anxiously awaits the premiere showing of Outtakes. Ow! But it's been revealed to this reporter by an inside source that Outtakes isn't really a movie at all. Allegedly, many of the scenes in this movie were paid for and sponsored by special interest groups and commercial sponsors. Now let's let me and my Calvins go over and see who's attending tonight's big event. I am really impressed, ladies and gentlemen. It appears to be Dolly. This is unprecedented. Pardon me, Dolly. Dolly, what, what's a big star like you doing at this sleazy film premiere? I just love movies like the boob, too. <laughs> oh, excuse me. I'm here to get pussy. Hey, you! Bad motherfucker, ain't you? Whoa! It must be, Dolly. Nice to feel you again. Thank you for the faint. What the? Oh, my God, it's... Princess! Damn it, poor faggots. Come on, Will Turk. Get the fuck out of my way. Get out of here, princess. Goddamn faggots everywhere. I'm getting the fuck out of here too. Out of my way. No, 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 Eddie. Right, move it back. Move it back. Make room. Make room. Well, uh, oh my God, ladies and gentlemen, look who's here. This is really exciting, and I want to be a part of it. New York, New York. Liza, darling, I'm so glad you made it. If I can make it here, I'd make it anywhere. Well, I suppose that's up to you, Liza. New York, New York. Is she the best or what, ladies and gentlemen? She's great. Arriving is the hot new director on this picture, Jack M. Sell, and his bimbo, <laughs> I mean date, the lovely star of Outtakes. Excuse me, Jack, I understand critics are already calling this new flick a real bow wow. Oh, drop that schmuck. <laughs> hey, how you doing, man? Well, Jack, you gonna tell him how bad the movie really is? Mm -hmm. Well, Mr. Sell, I hear that Siskel and Ebert both lost their lunch after seeing it. <laughs> They even got a lot of lunch to do. Whoa! Can you imagine? <laughs> hey, yeah. Just chill out. Let's roll the film, huh? All right, let's do it. Not 
freak. She's an outtake, she's gonna be an outtake. 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 This girl is gonna make history. That little puff is not going to undo what old man time has done to this face. I'm just trying to do my job. Hey, hey well, I'm what kind of movie is this? Shut hey, shut up, dickhead. Hey, who is this guy? Forrest Tucker, that guy from F Troop. Forrest Tucker? I thought he was dead. Good God, everybody makes movies these days. What's this? Grip changes. Hey. All right, stand by, please. Stand by, please. 
Well, what the hell am I supposed to do with this? Hey, piss off, man! Quiet, please. Quiet, right, please. Right. Well, what about the script? Roll sound. We got speed. I bet you have. I heard that. <laughs> hey, well, at least something is working around here. Wait in, Milton. All right, everyone. Lights. Camera. Now take scene one, take one. Ah, oh, that's what I love, enthusiasm. And action. Oh, hi there. I'm Forrest Tucker. Today we are premiering a brand new concept in comedy filmmaking. It's called Outtakes. I was an actor trained in the Shakespearean tradition of comedy spoof. I think that Outtakes combines the best of two worlds. Contemporary yet classic and uh, traditional yet avant-garde. Hey. Avant-garde? Oh, come on, we're still rolling, Mr. Tucker. We gotta be out of here in an hour. Uh, big budget, huh? Outtakes. Scene two, take one. Watch that thing, will you? Huh. And action. Action. You know, talk shows, both radio and television, have become a real part of American life. They serve as a legitimate showcase for new talent, entertainment, and give the people a chance to see celebrities as they really are. Hot, hot. Oh, God, what kind of a funny farm are we working in here? <laughs> well, how many in the audience think that life is better today than it was 10 years ago? Hmm? Now, then again, how many of you think that life today sucks them up, as the kids say? Yeah. Now, let me ask you this. How many McDonald's were there, say, 33 years ago? Anybody know? Don't think about it too hard. Let me tell you. 33 years ago, there was only one McDonald's. Can you believe that? Can you imagine the lines? <laughs> well, let me ask you this. Would you allow your children to use birth control? If it was an approved sex education program with a healthy diet and frequent bathing, matter of fact, my daughter's right on the panel. She's right here. Oh, well, great. Well, I think it's time that we meet our guests. Let's meet them right now, shall we? We're going to be talking about sexual freedom, and joining us today we have Mitzi O'Connor, high school senior, valedictorian, cheerleader, and poet laureate of public school 247 in Brooklyn. Let's hear it for us. <laughs> I like them. Right now, let's meet Miles Michael Mintner. I must say that it is not his real name. That's, that's, that's right. I'm a teenage homosexual, but I admit that freely. I'm proud of my sexual orientation. I come from a small town in Iowa where, where mm -hmm. I have to stay in the closet or else I get the shit kicked out of me. And I don't think I want that to happen until I find the right man. Well, it is America. Let's feel comfortable with that. And finally, I'd like to uh, welcome a most nationally famous sex therapist and cult leader in her own right. Please welcome Dr. Ruth. This question of sex is not a new one. It is just since the advent of contraceptives. You are all using contraceptives? Are we? Oh. I think so. That yeah. is what I like to hear. Song. Terrific. It is since the advent of contraceptives that people are more interested in doing it properly. I know this because I am well educated and I can visualize it. Uh, if it's only recently that people have begun to do sex right, how come there's so many people in the world? Yeah, yeah I think we want to know. But, 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 I am not 
saying that sexual performance is a difficult task. It's easier than riding a bike. <laughs> it is just that by removing the risk of pregnancy, we give people the ability to experiment and find out what feels good to them in the privacy of their home. What we're talking about is the chance to express their repressed libidinal urges. That's right, Phil. To throw off the shackles. Oh, I'll put the shackles on. <laughs> if you're a consenting adult. <laughs> People need to express their sexual needs. OK, OK, but where the heck do we draw the line? How old does a person have to be before they become a consenting adult? Parents must look at their children's physical needs, whatever they may be. An erection, orgasm, whatever. People are free to express their own sexual desires. Yeah, hey, hey, Phil, uh, you know, I'm not uh, totally against this uh, feelings of homosexuality, but uh, does he uh, really know what he's getting into? I mean, uh, when I was his age, you know, I had a lot of hormones, but all I wanted to do was get rid of them, you know, uh, you know pl plant the seed, you know, but I, and I wasn't too particular about, uh, about how to do it, but uh, how does this guy know he's gay? I mean, who, who told him? Phil, yeah. he must explore his needs. They may change. Today, he loves men. Tomorrow, it may be women, or a loaf of bread, whatever. As long as it fulfills his needs and is good sex. Uh-huh. Now, is the caller there? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh -huh. he hello? Yeah. Yeah, please, go ahead. Oh, oh I see. I see. You, you want me to go ahead? Yeah, yeah. Well, Phil, it seems to me you're talking about sex. Well, yes, usually. I mean, next to the egg, it's nature's most perfect, uh, perfect food. But when we engage in sex, either uh, physically or orally, as we are doing now... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, please, get to the point, sir. We're running out of time. Uh, sex is a freedom we all fought for, but there are responsibilities. You got to keep your hair short and obey the rules and learn how to march in straight lines. And, uh, 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 we're running out of time. We'll be right back after this commercial announcement. Stay tuned. <laughs> rut with your smut? Are your centerfolds getting old and stuck together? Don't blow your wad on lukewarm porn. Come up to the magazine that'll make you cream in your jeans. Pubes. don't bore them with the forum. You don't even need to know how to read. Just open your eyes and open your flies. Satisfaction guaranteed. Pubes. Magazine wet dreams were made of. At New York Savings and Loan, we never say no. I need this home really bad. My wife, my kids, our vacation in Rio. This is Laura. This is me. I need it really bad. Today, I got the money. Fuck off. <laughs> We're back and we're talking to our guests about modern sexual behavior. Dr. Ruth, are there any taboos left concerning modern sexual practices? There shouldn't be, Phil. I believe that as long as there is agreement among the participants about satisfying their mutual needs, or as George Bernard Shaw once said, do anything you want. <laughs> Only just don't disturb the horses. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Ruth. Now, Mitzi, yeah. let's just for a second pretend that there's no one here 
but you and me. Yeah. I like that, Phil. Should we leave you alone, Phil? Oh, come on, come on. Now, this can only happen in television. Anyway, Mitzi, <laughs> just for a second, let's pretend that your mom isn't here. Mitzi, can you tell me, have you ever disturbed the horses? Do you mean literally? Sexually? No. Oh, thank God. <laughs> well, let me put it this way. Have you ever sown any wild oats? Getting back to the horses again, Phil? Come on. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just before homecoming, I guess. Oh, well, that sounds harmless enough. A couple of kids in the backseat of a car, you know, watching a movie, drinking a couple of sodas, perhaps wow. chewing on a pretzel, each at one end, and then pretty soon there's a baby involved and then no. some grass. <laughs> no. It was, it was more than a couple. Oh, well, how many? Oh, I don't know for sure. Let's see. Hmm. Brad, Bruce, Eddie, John. It was uh, the football team. Why, Mitzi, why? But, Mom, I'm a cheerleader. They were so tense before a big game. I had to loosen them up. Oh, okay. I admire her school spirit. Yeah. yeah. I like her phone number and the queers, too. Oh, so little time, so little time. I don't know, Mitzi, but I have been intimate with her mom. <laughs> and I must say, she has been a comfort. You see, my girlfriend's been sick and, uh, well... Well, well, okay. Well, we're running short on time. Oh, my God, yeah. oh my God we're ruined. We'll have to move. I want to die. Oh, well, of course you do. But is the, <laughs> is the caller there? Bill, I'm the guy who called earlier. Oh, you yeah. cut me off. Okay. Well, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, well, don't try it again anyway. When it comes to sex, I feel a lot like Dr. Ruth does when she said that thing about the horses. Oh, now, yeah. I think that's what America is all about. How so? Men and horses together, a great coupling of man and beast. Well, look, sir, a we're running out of time. A sweaty union wrapped in the American flag, yeah, crushing the weak and the vulnerable. Please. Don't hang up on me, you scum-sucking pinko. You don't respect freedom. You don't know the meaning of the word. If Dr. Ruth could just meet my horse, I could ride it right down. I'm not far away. You know, Phil, you're a douchebag and a disposable one at that. We're in New York City, and we'll be right back. I know where you are, Phil, you poor-eyed little toad. I know where you are. Mm. The seafood is mm. excellent. Mm. How was the red snapper this evening? Dead, sir. Tonight's special, though, we have some kind of steak thing with some smelly sauce. Of course, we got some strange casserole filled with God knows what. You want it or not? I'd like the steak, medium rare. Very good, ma'am. Would you care for a baked potato with that? Um, sure. All right, and may I recommend a Bloody Mary to drink with your dinner? Why not? And for you, sir. Waiter, what's that horrible smell? Uh, it smells like that sauce from the kitchen. Give us me. Something wrong, then? Always be prepared. Pandora's tampons. Never leave home without them. We're back in New York with our guests. Now, Miles Mentner, there seems to be some sort of di economy in your sexual attitude. How so? Well, you come on the show and you publicly admit your homosexuality, yet in your hometown in Iowa, you keep it in the closet. As I said earlier, I live in a small town and that sort of news would just embarrass my family. Well then, why appear on my show? 
Well, fortunately, the show's not carried in our town. Phil, read the card. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I should have done this earlier. We'd like to welcome station KGEV-TV to the show, Channel 12 in Granville, Iowa. Let's hear it. <laughs> now, Miles Mintner, or whatever your real name is, when did you become a homosexual, a dick smoker? When did you start laying mouth pipe? Who, who said that? Well, you did. I, I did not. No. I, I'm an American boy. I, I have urges. Reg, regular urges. Miles, you said earlier in the show that you were the kind of a guy who would look at totem poles and uh, flagpoles and uh, climb up and down things that were greased heavily. I, I must have been drinking. I, I don't remember. I must have been drinking. I it is perfectly normal to express certain no. sexual confusion when faced with difficult choices. You oh, know why I don't... Oh, what is going oh we have a guest in the studio. Dr. Ruth, I'm from Philly. She's outside. I want to tell you, and you, the TV viewer, that the American flag is in disgrace by this homo trying to convert young studs to fucking homos in that nipple. Where were you when I was in high school? No, you For a copy of the transcript of this program, please send $25 in cash to Donahue Transcripts, Care of Marlowe, Post Office Box 5555, Cincinnati, Ohio. You motherfucker! Show sticks! Shut up! You're taking it all over! They put out Do you believe this? Why don't you take a hike? <laughs> God, you know, I have had just about enough of this nonsense. Yeah. Good riddance. Yeah, now we don't have a star. You call him a star? <laughs> Carol, Carol, go talk to him, would you? All right, all right. Switch I want my money back. Getting out of here. That's enough. All right, Tucker's back. All right, stand by, everybody. Let's get ready to roll the slasher movie. Bruce, I told you to get that thing away from me. Turn you over my knee and spank you. What scene we on, Carol? Oh, uh, 666. All right, Tom, roll it. Steve. Slate in. <laughs> you again, huh? I predict no future at all for that boy. Cut, cut. Ah, let's just roll the film. The motion picture that breaks all the rules. Where nothing is sacred. And anything goes. The motion picture that enraged all America.
the motion picture that's backed by unpopular demand is coming to a theater near you. Faster! All these guys look alike, man. Our guy, he's a... Uh, he's got a little bit more of a crazy look about him, you know? Face front. Jack M. Sells Black Christmas. To Janie from Santa. Oh, Who will be Santa's next victim? Ah! It's okay, Janie. The nurse is bringing you a sedative. You just relax and try to sleep now, huh? Here you go, Janie. Your parents will be here soon. <laughs> And who will be there to stop him? I'm gonna get this psycho. Okay. Okay, Ricky, hold it right there. You have the right to remain silent. Wait, Brody, I just heard on the radio that they spotted our man lurking around Lakeshore Drive. Lakeshore Drive? Oh, well, sneeze back. I'm gonna let you go with just a warning this time. Don't let it happen again. Let's go. Sex. Why don't you say hello to my blue steel? Oh, Steve, you're just super keen. Violence. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. Oh, my God, the phone's dead. So, so am I. <laughs> Rock and roll. <laughs> and rip-roaring action. Black Christmas introduces newcomers to the big screen. Here it is, everybody. Buddy G, Steve, Billy. Ah! Oh, my God. Bobby Wexler as Jamie. Police? Uh, yes. Uh, Santa Claus is trying to kill me. Jolene Lutz in her unforgettable portrayal as Sherry. Uh, no, <laughs> no, um, I'm all right. Michael Wexler as the weirdo boyfriend. Billy, what are you doing? Just trying to get you interested. Oh, come on. Jania, I, I really think you're pretty special. Oh, please. You know, if you don't use it, you, you're going to dry up. Oh, sick. Ralph Flores as crazy Chris Kringle. Oh, oh, oh. Jack M. Sells Black Christmas. Banned in Boston, denounced in Detroit, and picketed in Peoria. has been smoking marijuana in this vicinity.
Outtakes. Scene three, take one. Are we ready? Yeah. <laughs> Outtakes, scene three, take two. You be careful of that thing, it's a deadly weapon. Talk about deadly. All right, and action. In the next segment. Pass the corn. Quiet down. In the next segment, Outtakes examines the most recent phenomenon, the late, 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 late night news. From New York, the late, late, late night edition of Action News with Bernard Jacobs sitting in for Robert Bentley and Bonnie Chung filling in for Connie Dong, who is ill. Well, the onslaught of summer means many things to many people. Vacations, cookouts, and baseball. But to one local group, it means just one thing, strike. No graves, no no graves, and reporter no Len Nerd graves, no is at the municipal no cemetery graves, with an update. No graves, Len? No graves, no graves. I don't know why I have to be out here covering this shitty assignment, Randy. I mean, why don't we just show the footage of last year's strike, huh? What the fuck's going on? Uh, Lenny? <clears throat> well, well we, uh, we seem to be having some technical difficulties, so uh, we'll be back to that story later. Do we have that feed yet? Jesus Christ. Why can't you guys strike when it's cooler? I mean, I'm standing here, and anchorman Bernard Jacobs is sitting in the air-conditioned studio on his big fat ass looking sincere. I'm Bernard Jacobs. <laughs> it, it was announced today in Hollywood that uh, in order to raise the sagging ratings of the television series Dallas, producers feel it is time once again to shoot JR. One week after strike negotiations have broken Aaron down, Spelling. grave diggers have decided to dig in their heels. Well, we uh, seem to have that technical difficulty fixed, so back to you, Len. I'm telling you, the city's really giving us a rotten deal. They gotta stop stiffing us. Rumor has it that you will go back to work if they issue a court order. <laughs> Over my dead body. No rays, no graves. <laughs> uh, Len? And so it appears today can heaven this? can wait, but they can't. For Action News, this is Len Nerd. And now Bonnie Chung has a story about the new sexual revolution. Bonnie? 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 Uh, the New York Times reported today that uh, the sexual revolution that began some 20 years ago is all but over. That 80% of Americans polled preferred sushi to sex. Our Action News reporter Connie Lingus asked this controversial question. Thank you, Bob. Today we're out on the streets of Chicago taking a random sampling on a very controversial subject. Excuse me, ma'am. Can you tell me how you feel about fellatio? What is it? I don't even remember. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. I don't know. What is it? Huh? I don't understand. What's fellatio? Go ahead. Tell her, Con. <laughs> It's a blowjob. <laughs> what kind of an interview is this? <laughs> Excuse me, miss. Can you tell me how you feel about fellatio? Who's that? Who in the hell is fellatio? Well, I think positively of fellatio. Very positively of that, in fact. Thank you. How do you feel about fellatio? Oh, hmm. Well, uh, his camera work is very good, but his directing is often heavy-handed, and it's confusing to see all the subtitles underneath while you're trying to listen to the dialogue. You could follow along as best as you can, but sometimes it doesn't match up with the action that's going on. So, uh, I try to stay away from foreign films. Excuse me, ma'am, can you tell me how you feel about fellatio? Oh, I think it's wonderful. It's a great dessert. <laughs> I don't think I should answer that. <laughs> I'm sure my father likes it. 
<laughs> well, that's Pubic Opinion for today. For Action News, this is Connie Lingus. Uh, thank you, Connie. And in a related story, the AMA reported that a new laboratory study may have found a cure for the primarily homosexual disease AIDS. The cure? Pussy. Can we say that on the air? Oh, what the fuck? I'm, I'm tired. It's late. You're tired. I know Bonnie's tired. We're dead. Anyway, even Pope John Paul got involved in the sex issue today when he declared that rock and roll, permissive teenage sex, and yogurt may cause cancer. The AMA had no comments on the story. Moving along now to cultural events, an audience at Lincoln Center tonight saw America's premier ballerina, Pamela Dreisen, teamed for the first time with Russian defector, Uranov Gublagov. Why don't you just consider that footage an outtake, huh? <laughs> Next up, the mayor in deep shit again. That story in a moment. Everyone loves chili. And more and more people today are eating normal chili. It's great. Perfect for lunch, snack after school, dinner, even my sister likes it. Normel is just chock full of meat, big juicy beans, and mmm, that spicy sauce. Mmm. And that's why everyone's eating Normel. It's America's favorite chicken. <clears throat> Normel. Don't fart around with any other chili. Okay, let's all crowd around. You'll get a better view. You'll fool people into thinking there's interest. What we have here, parsley. Not what the pipe was designed for. Can you imagine what the pipe was designed for? College crowd, huh? Tobacco. Pretend this is your favorite tobacco. Pretend you really want some. Here's how fast you can get it. Now, if you can do it that fast with a rolling machine and paper, you ought to be on the news. Wouldn't you light up? Nothing falls out. Amaze your friends. Always a hit on the house. And do you experts know what's going to collect on this spring in the course of time? Resin. Ask the girl who smokes one. Correct. The clean the spring light up. Smoke off your nicotine resin, the old principle of waste not, want not. As you can see from our elaborate display board, makes the pipe completely portable. Load her up with your favorite tobacco, put on the cap, put it in your pocket, go for a drive, go to a party, go to a concert. When you think it's cool, whip it out, pop off the top, light her up, take a toke, you're on your way. One last thing, can you all see the little pile I've got on the table? I'd like you to imagine that's the very last of some really sensational tobacco you hocked your car paid through the teeth to get. You've been smoking all day, you've had to think you can get it off the table into papers. Would you want to put in papers even if you could. You might be too smoked to roll. You're never too smoked to breathe. All you have to do to load the pipe is breathe. Pipes designed for you serious professional smokers. You know who you are. Who want to light up not have a manual dexterity test with a rolling machine. Perfect gift for the real head of the family. Don't know what else I can say, folks. You've seen them advertised on that popular TV show, Bowling for Quaaludes. Remember, they're completely guaranteed. Remember, they're on sale this weekend. And remember, folks, no matter where you go, there you are. We sell them, too. Be the first on your block to own two dozen or help support missionary work in the Bahamas. Help the good sisters of St. Haraz. We sell them, too. Good for all cigarette and pipe tobaccos. Don't be shy. Come on and buy. Who's going to be first? To order the pipe, send $8.50 cash to The Pipe, Box 525, Tijuana, Mexico. Attention, Jose. Marijuana not included. Comes with a book of instructions, service policy, lifetime guarantee. Lose or break any part of the pipe, drop a line to the address on the brochure. If you can find us, we'll make good. 
The mayor was caught with his pants down today when our Catch a Politician reporter questioned him on the misappropriation of city funds involving his brother-in-law's insurance company. Let's go to the videotape. No, film. What? Oh, film. Just roll the goddamn film. Sir, where the hell are the paper clips? The damn government pays 28 bucks a piece for them. Mr. Mayor, sir, is it true they're indicting your brother-in-law next week? No comment. Out of my way. Out of my way. Excuse me, Mr. Mayor, sir. No comment. Mr. Mayor. Excuse me, what was your role in the insurance scheme? The public has a right to know. Well, another political career down the toilet. This is Lucy Bowles for Action News. On a sadder note tonight, Kellogg's reported that the beloved Tony the Tiger was murdered while filming a new commercial for Frosted Flakes. Unconfirmed reports by the National Enquirer say that a deranged young actor stabbed the tiger in the abdomen after a quarrel between the two. This just in. Mission Control in Houston reports a successful top secret landing by a U.S. astronaut on the planet Mars. We now go direct by satellite as astronaut Michael Curran takes his first historic steps onto the red planet. That's one small step for... God damn those motherfuckers! I told them to fix those steps over a year ago. Shit. The FBI put on its 10 most wanted list the name of one of America's most popular evangelists, Timmy Swaggart. Swaggart, known for his sensationalizing of religion and attempting medical cures on his followers for everything from earaches to hemorrhoids, was charged today with practicing medicine without a license and selling fake 24 karat gold pens and crosses through the mail. An anonymous yet reliable source reported that Swaggart has taken refuge in his $5 million estate in the south of France. But friend and co-evangelist Anil Roberts said of his friend, quote, I always knew Jimmy giving people the finger was going to get him in trouble, unquote. Hemorrhoids, we are gonna remove this rectal affliction from this young man. Young man, I want you to bend down and say, Amen! I said, say, Amen! I said, say, Amen! Well, that America, ladies and gentlemen, what is that a true America? And in sports today, our field reporter, Suzanne Franklin, got this exclusive interview with New York quarterback Frankie Johnson after their big win over Philadelphia. Gosh, Frankie, I can see why you score so much. Franklin, are you sure you're from Action Sports? Hey, Frankie, why don't you ever talk into your microphone? <laughs> well, uh, we'll try to get that interview a little bit later. Stay tuned. Remember to file your taxes this year? Better not be late. We can auction off your house, close your business, steal all your money from your bank accounts, and even garnish your salary for the rest of your life. We're the IRS, and we're above the law. Hey there, Mr. Fine, sir. Stop right there. What do you want? Agent Johnson, IRS. Oi, vey, listen, I tried to file on time. I, did, I didn't have a pen. What could I do? Look at I got all the papers right here in my briefcase. I can prove, I can prove everything that I got here. Wait, wait, don't shoot me. Don't, don't shoot. Don't shoot me. Oh, oh. So remember, April 15th is tax day. Better shoot for it. A public service message brought to you by the Internal Revenue Service.
Are you lonely, down and out? Then reach out and touch someone you know. Calling is the next best thing to being there. I've been watching you, baby. I'm gonna come over and I'm gonna eat your pussy. <laughs> Remember, reach out and touch someone. And finally, from Miami at our network affiliate KUNT TV, we present our bilingual weather report with Bob Hansen. As the hot spell continues across the country, temperatures in some states will continue to soar past the 100 degree mark tomorrow. You wanna talk hot Yankee doodles, oy vey Bobby, you got hot. Cancel your bar mitzvahs, cancel your caterers, your matzo balls will melt and your kishkis will shrink like Uncle Maury Schwanz. Excuse me, Mrs. Rosen, I think that's all the time we have this evening. All your horsey schmuck, it ain't over till the fat lady sings, ladies and joins mine cousin Florence. When it's hot and sticky, don't no. you dunk your dicky, keep your picket in your back. Well, that's all the time we have for tonight, for Bonnie Chung and myself. Thanks for watching, <laughs> and good night. This has been the late, late, late night edition of Action News, with Bernard Jacobs sitting in for Robert Bentley and Bonnie Chung, filling in for Connie Dung, who is ill. Portions of this broadcast were pre-recorded. <laughs> Must be ratings week again. Susan, do you take Albert to be your lawfully wedded husband? To get knocked up immediately, quit work, force him to hold down three jobs, spend every dime he makes, and then dump him for a lesbian tennis player? Okay, shitbag, give me your wallet. Oh, goodness. Mm -hmm. well, feel around a little bit more. You'll find it. It's in there. Embrace me. You irreplaceable human. Embrace me. You sweet embrace. over to see my new apartment. Oh, it was a pleasure. It is lovely. I love what you've done with these walls. The whole place looks great. Uh, oh, just could, love it. Could you get that, please? Oh, sure. If you think that I am going to reach out and touch someone with that thing, you're sadly mistaken, young lady. <laughs> Albert, you're all wet. Susan, there's something I need to tell you. What? I suffer from premature ejaculation. Uh, Albert, we haven't even started do We haven't even started doing anything.
Just my old lady. She's on the rag again, yeah? Mm. <laughs> Count your blessings, bitch. If this wasn't a movie, I'd be a seven-foot black dude with a heart on. First, there was I spit on your grave. Now comes, I fart on your grave. Rated R, and coming soon to your neighborhood theater. I could run my fingers through your hair. But I didn't mean there. Oh. 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 I'm supposed to insert my penis and repeat if necessary. Upside down. Oh. Debbie style of fantasy. <clears throat> uh, yes, uh, I'm Debbie, and I've got the hearts for you. Oh, baby, I want you to stroke my thighs and suck on my big tits. Oh, 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 you beast. My love box is just aching for your big five-inch love tour. Oh, oh. Seat for us, Jesus, Linda, why do you always pop your zits while I'm driving? Hmm. Just
disgusting. All right, slate in, please. I'll take scene five, take one. Stand by. And action. Well, we hope that you've enjoyed the time you spent watching outtakes. And if you did, uh, tell a friend that you came with about it. I... Friend that you came with? Wait, wait a minute. We... No, I'm sorry, Chuck. We've got to keep rolling. We're almost out of film. Yeah, we can't keep rolling until we get this script rewritten, buddy boy. All right, cut it. Reload. Andy, will you give me that case of Jack Daniels? Hey, you know who financed this? The soybean lobby. They did it. Of course they did it. Great. Socially significant, but yet a little bit underdone as far as the meaning of life is concerned. I come, I come for a joke. That's about it. Hi, Mr. Tucker. We're reloading. Let's roll. Speed. Slate in, please. Come on, who's working the slate? What the? Hey, where's the slate? Milton, get off behind there. <laughs> hey, you again, huh? <laughs> yeah, me again. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, 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 no. no. Come on, let's hurry up. Yeah, let's beat the track. <laughs> hey, it's not over yet. <laughs> Yeah, well, don't try it again. Well, I'm sorry. Anyway, like that. when it comes to sex, I feel a lot like Dr. Root does when she said that thing about the horses. Uh huh. I'm a douchebag. <laughs> friend and co-evangelist Oral Roberts said of his friend, quote, I always knew Jimmy, he says Oral Roberts. Is it supposed to be anal? Brody. What? Thank you, Bob. Today we're on the streets of Chicago taking a rip. Thank you, Bob. Today we're out on the street. What? Just say hello to my blue steel. Oh, Steve, you're just super cute. Excuse me, Jack. I understand the critics are already calling this new flick a real bow wow. Oh, drop dead, schmuck. <laughs> Eddie, how you doing? Well, Jack, you go to my. <sighs> Why don't you say hello to my blue steel? Oh, Steve. You're just super. <laughs> Take 11. I have this terrible headache, shooting pains in my eyes, and I have throbbing in my temple, even a vice-like grip on my sinuses. And when I get like this, I pop the top off the bottle and next for extra strength, buffering, cam, um, because of these two tiny tablets. Oh, turn my terrible trouble all around in no time. So try extra strength, buffering, take pills and water. <laughs> Whoa, what a relief. Speed. Additions, take four. Look at this stupid cunt. I have this terrible headache, shooting pains in my eyes, this throbbing in my temple. 
There's even a vice-like grip on my sinuses. And when I get like this, I pop the top off the bottle of extra strength buffering. Sure. <laughs> Additions, take eight. Cut. Take 12. I pop off the top of the bottle and take two pills out of here. And I take some water and turn, and ter turn my terrible troubles around in no time. So they try extra strength, buffering. Take the pill. What a... What a relief. She's an outtake, she's gonna be an outtake. 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 This girl is gonna make history. Mary's sweetheart is coming to a theater near you. She's an outtake, she's gonna be an outtake. She's an outtake, she's gonna be an outtake. This girl is gonna make history. It was the night before Christmas, and all through the town, 
Not a creature was stirring as I was making my rounds. The snow fell in buckets for Christmas that year. Perfect, they say, for St. Nicholas to appear. The children were nestled all snug in their beds, except for one kid who was out of his head. And I was there. My name is Brody, and I'm a cop. I carry a badge, a gun, and bullets, and a nightstick and, and handcuffs. And Big one or a small one? I'll take one of the hairy ones. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you're just always like this. It's a party. It's Christmas. <laughs> but we're not alone. Don't have to worry about Mickey. He's sound asleep. Yeah, you know, on Christmas Eve, I used to stay up all night. I'm telling you, when Mickey goes to sleep, he stays asleep. Now, hand me one of those balls. <laughs> <laughs> and what does Santa get for those balls? Oh, come here. Madame, Madame Claus. Oh, you mean subordinate Claus. folks was almost 20 years ago and they locked crazy little Mickey up tighter than a drum and today I'm still working the night beat still carry a badge a gun bullets and oh to hell with it you get the general idea Well, you don't have to rub it in. I know I'm no Bo Derek. Sure. Oh, but wait a minute, Cherry. I've got to babysit tonight. Well, that's all right. We'll come over anyway. I don't know. But we'll see. Oh, great. <laughs> and I'll see if Bill can come, too. What you need, Janie, is a real hug. <laughs> no, don't bring Billy. Boys make me so nervous. Maybe because I'm just too brainy. I mean, it scares him off, you know? Sherry? Sherry? Sherry, are you there? What is it? What's wrong? Are you sick? Sherry? Uh, no. <laughs> no, um, I'm all right. Uh, by the way, what apartment are you babysitting in anyway? Apartment 666. 666? Janie, you know, I was told never to go near that place. Something bad happened there a long time ago. I hear it's haunted. Oh, come on. That's just a story. Who ever heard of a haunted condo? Bullshit. <laughs> Look, Sherry, if you're trying to scare me, it's working. 
Maybe you guys had better come over tonight and keep me company. <laughs> You're just in time. Bobby's over here. Look, Bobby, Janie's here. I know. Hi, Bobby. Hi. Gosh, Mrs. Brown, what a beautiful tree. It sure looks like Christmas in here. Thanks, Janie. Look, um, here's 20 bucks for pizza in case you get hungry. That should cover a tip, too. I'll be out real late tonight. And uh, see that he doesn't get into his presence, OK? I know. No problem, Mrs. Brown. Bobby and I will be just fine. Bobby, now don't make a mess. I just had the place cleaned. I know. Ciao, everyone. I had this really freaky dream it was about this, this big red moon and it was just bleeding all over me. It was so gross. You know, I get crazy when there's a full moon. You don't need a moon to get crazy. You're nuts anyway. <laughs> I got it. I got a word that's just going to kill you. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Try it. How do you spell fornicate? Fornicate? Uh, that's easy. F. You got that? Yeah. O. You got that? You got that? And. I think the rest of the world is going to be here. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Tanya, let's sleep here. Shh, Bobby. Now you just close your eyes and get some rest. I'll try to get these people out of here as soon as I can. Remember, Santa's coming tonight. I know.
tiny reindeer. The suspect escaped tonight from Sunnydale Sanitarium. His name is Mickey Schultz, uh, his alias. <laughs> Get this gang, is Chris Kringle. So he's back in town, huh? A real nut. You know what, Anderson? What, Brody? About 20 years ago, he killed his mother and his old man with a butcher knife on Christmas Eve. I never saw so much blood in my life, and I'll never forget it either. Watch it, Brody, a red light. Uh... Fuck him. I'm a cop. Anyway, we went in, and we found the two of them laying there, packed up like a side of beef. And that little monster standing there with a knife in his hands. My partner, Kelly, started puking. He started puking his guts out all over the place. Uh, excuse me, Brody. I think we should acknowledge that APB. Don't worry about it, Anderson. I got my own way of finding this. One look into his dead black eyes, and I'll know him. He's a stone nut. Ever since he saw his mama kissing Santa Claus, he's been crazy ever since. You know what, Anderson? When the doctors examined the kid's head, they found dog shit for brains. Ah, oh, jeez. I get the general idea. Cover, Steve. Uh, see you guys later. Bye, guys. Yeah, Betty Jean, later. Bye, be good. If I wanted to be good, I would have stayed at home. Hey, Sue, where's Bill? Ah, uh, he's probably taking a dump. <laughs> oh, would you turn geez. that damn thing off? Yo, Betty Jean. Oh, uh, I guess it's chow time, Sue. We'll have fun, guys. At least it's low cal. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you say hello to my blue steel? Oh, Steve, you're just super keen. Oh, man, I can see why they call you Jaws. I'm gonna get this psycho. Okay. Okay, Ricky, hold it right there. You have the right to remain silent. Wait, Brody, I just heard on the radio that they spotted our man lurking around Lakeshore Drive. Lakeshore Drive? Oh, well, sneeze back. I'm gonna let you go with just a warning this time. But don't let it happen again.
not check it. I gotta do everything myself. guys look alike, man. Our guy, he's a... Uh, he's got a little bit more of a crazed look about him, you know? Face front. <laughs> These guys are a little... <laughs> well, I think they're a little too jolly. Mmm. Want some? Mm, yeah. Oh, in a minute. I gotta pee. Hey, watch your mouth. You're gonna have to learn how to talk more like a lady.
the tub. Come on, lover boy, don't you want to join me in the tub? <laughs> Did you hear that? Oh, it's probably just Sherry. She's a moaner. Yeah, how would you know? <coughs> Billy, hurry. I think you better go see what's wrong. No way, Jose. Please. <coughs> I better call the police. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Oh, my God, the phone's dead. So, so am I. Ah! Oh. Shore Drive. That's 507 North Lakeshore Drive, apartment 666. Did you say 666? Um, the number here is 555-8310. That's 555-8310, and the zip is 60611. Oh, please hurry. Slow down, sweetheart. Slow down. 10-4, I got you. Brody's on the case, sweetheart. Estimated time of arrival, 5.3 minutes. By the way, sweetheart, what's your name? My name is Jenny Johnson. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Oh. Ah! Oh, oh. <laughs> Anderson?
okay, miss. Brody's in charge now. Hey, you guys have been smoking marijuana in this vicinity? He's gone hmm? now. It's all over. I don't know about that, Anderson. I certainly hope so. But just in case, young lady, I strongly suggest that you better watch out. You better not pout. Because that Santa may be coming back to town. <laughs> Those are nice. I knew you needed somewhere. Where'd you go? Fields. Oh. oh, here's the card for you. Thank you, dear. There's a kid giving you trouble. Oh, it's OK. <laughs> All right, I'm ready no, for another no. present. Oh, let's see, Jenny. Oh, here. Why don't you open this one? I'm just dying to see if you like it. Thanks, Jack. This is great. To Janie from Santa. Ah, I can't wait to see what's in it. It's okay, Janie. The nurse is bringing you a sedative. You just relax and try to sleep now, huh? Here you go, Janie. Your parents will be here soon. 